Hey everybody, what is up? Back with another plane review for the channel. Um, so, we did the Spirit of St. Louis, and now we're doing the J3 Cub. So, this airplane is probably the easiest thing to fly in this game. No joke. It's, it's literally the easiest plane to fly um, in the game is the uh, J3 Cub. Very simple aircraft, built in 1938 and goes all the way up to today. This aircraft served a lot of uh, things through its lifetime. Uh, it's been through World War II, um, Korea War, Cold War, all kinds of stuff. And now it is used as a private plane for pilots. Uh, so... This is it. Very small aircraft, very light airplane. Um, it only weighs like 765 pounds. So with a good strong pair of friends, you could actually kind of carry this thing through a runway, not pick it up or anything, but lift it by the tail and uh, carry it around to a hangar. So it's a very easy plane. Very easy. Um, has a crew of uh, one. Pilot would sit right there, and then a passenger would sit in the front seat. Don't really know how that works, but it's kind of like a biplane sort of thing. Just mono. Uh, so, very, very tiny. Like, very tiny. This is a bush plane. That's technically what they're named for. Uh, you will see these things flying around in Alaska with big tires and all that landing on dirt strips that's what these planes are for so let's jump to the cockpit so here's your cockpit very very simple um, it doesn't even have a battery switch all you need to do is just turn on the fuel and that's it um, yeah see very very simple interior that's your little radio compass uh, GPS fuel clock and then that's it so this aircraft does not require a battery switch and it is also uh, your yoke is connected to wires that pull the aircraft's ailerons and elevators and rudders um, as well so pretty much all you need to do to start the plane is um, make sure that your fuel is on for one that's another throttle there for the front seat engine primer um, and then this is mixture. And then right beside me to the left is the magneto switch. Uh, but before we get the aircraft in the air, let's do some history on it. Well, some of the background of it, so like its characteristics. So it does have a crew of one. You could uh, put one passenger in the plane, which would be in the front seat. So the plane was only about 22 feet long. Uh, well, 22.5 uh, feet long. Its wingspan was 35.3 feet. Um, and it was only six, uh, six eight. That's how tall it was, six eight. Um, its wing, uh, no, sorry, not the wing area. Yeah, so the wing area was about 178.5 feet. It's okay. Um, so as I did mention, its empty weight is six, uh, 765 pounds. Its empty, uh, its useful load is about. 455 pounds. Its max takeoff weight would be 1,220 pounds. So now let's get to the engine. So it has a one continental A65-8 air-cooled horizontally uh, opposed four-cylinder 65 horsepower um, 48 kilowatt 200 and uh, 2,350 RPM engine, which is okay. That, that's pretty good for this plane. It's not going to go that fast, but it's still pretty good. Its top speed, it can reach about 87 miles an hour or 140 kilometers per hour. Its cruising speed is about 75 miles per hour or 121 uh, kilometers an hour. Uh, the airplane could fly about 220 miles and had a service ceiling of 11,500 feet. Its rate of climb was about 450 feet per minute, and that's it. So, 
that's the plane. There were a few more variants of this aircraft, but this is the main one. So this is the base model that you get with the game. So you're not going to have to go rooting around a bunch of websites trying to find one of these, because it's right here. Okay, so that's the magneto switch. It's kind of a bummer to, um, you know, use, so I'm just going to power the plane on just like this. So it's a very simple startup. And let's get her in the air. So this plane does not have flaps and doesn't need them. Um, the Spirit of St. Louis aircraft is actually a lot faster than this plane. Uh, so that's a good thing. But it does not have the best climb rate. Okay, so I'm going to sit in the front seat of the plane because that will allow me to see better. So this is usually where the passenger would sit, but the passenger also gets a yoke system and a pair of rudders and a throttle quadrant. So you can sit wherever you want in this plane. I usually sit here because it's better. So you only got like five gauges in total, um, if you include the compass. Um, but without the compass, you'd only have four. So you got RPM, your airspeed indicator, that's your altimeter, this is your oil temperature, and oil pressure. And that's it. So that's it for your gauges. Um, here's the aircraft in the air. It does not have any lights at all. And uh, sometimes these planes can be restricted to flying altitudes because of that, and it's also a very light uh, airplane, so, you know, there's a few things here and there. But overall, the aircraft's performance in this game is very, very good, um, and I would recommend this plane for beginners. I wouldn't even start off with the Cessna, to be honest. If you're, like, new to flight simulators like this, with this type of mechanics, pick the J3. It will be your friend for the beginning and probably always will be. Um, this was not the first airplane I tried out in this game. The first airplane that I tried out when I got this game was I think um, uh, one of the Moonies, the Mooneries, um, which is a single engine um, aircraft that is a bit more advanced than a Cessna would be. Um, it has operating landing gear and so forth. It's not a turboprop or anything, but it's still Know, it's a booty, so yeah. But if you're gonna start off the plane, start off with this. This is the easiest aircraft to fly in this game, besides the ultralight. I'm not counting that thing. That's just out of the question. So if you want to get right into a closed cockpit aircraft, this is the first one to try out. Um, you could pull some pretty fancy stunts in this thing. Um, I don't know for sure. Yeah, probably not. You could do a backflip or something like that. Let's see. Probably would stall out. Yeah, it's stalling out. Okay, so I guess I was wrong about the airplane uh, being able to do stunts. Um, but, yeah. So, it handles really well. Um, and if I'm going to rate the airplane, I'm probably going to have to give it about a, an 8.5 out of 10. Um, for performance... Uh, realism and body design. Um, this is also a very good aircraft for beginner pilots, so definitely do this plane before you get into Cessna's people. I am telling you right now, a Cessna may seem like one of the easiest planes to fly, which it is. I'm not wrong. It's very easy to fly. I've flown one. That was the first plane I flew in real life was a Cessna 172 Skyhawk. Um, I flew it from this airport to Toronto, did a flyby past the CN Tower, and landed. So that was the very first aircraft I flew. Um, beautiful plane, handled like a dream through the whole way. The only downside was is that I picked it on a windy day, and there were a lot of thermal action going over Lake Ontario, because that's where we had to fly over, so we, were, um, we had to fly right over the lake. So the plane was being thrown around like a rag doll up there, and our altitude, we were restricted to 3,100 feet, which is okay. Um, I, I was happy with that, because uh, we could have picked Niagara Falls, but if there was cloud over there, so I wasn't really going to go there, because the clouds were a bit lower than uh, 3,100, and they went all the way up to probably 10,000 feet, so we were like, okay, let's just go to Toronto. But uh, going through there, 
uh, the aircraft would pitch up and down violently sometimes, and I just remember one time where I was sitting in the plane and then all of a sudden it drops like that, and it picks itself back up again like this, and that was the thermal doing that, and at first I thought something went on, and then, you know, I was like, oh, that was a thermal. Fuck, that scared the hell out of me. So that, that's what it was. Um, but it, it was still a very, very fun experience. Um, and yeah, a very good memory that I'll fondly remember forever. First aircraft I flew, Cessna 172, which is a very easy plane. But yet again, I have had experience with flight simulators. I'm not saying a flight sim is going to completely help you become a pilot, but it's definitely going to help show you the fundamentals and all that kind of stuff. Like, this can kind of help you, you know? Like, I've spent a lot of time learning before I got into the cockpit of a real plane. So I kind of already knew what I was doing. But even then, I, it, it was still new to me, you know? Like, the game can only do so much until you actually get into the real thing. And then you're like, oh, shit. This is a lot different handling than a real plane, you know? Like, a real plane's not going to do this if you pull up like that, and, you know, the physics aren't really going to do that. It might, in some cases, but it won't. So you never know what's going to go on. But all the rest, it was fun. Great experience. Costed $400, but, uh, you know what? It was worth it in the end. <laughs> so, yeah. But at least in this game, I can fly any airplane I want. Um, but yeah, if you guys are thinking about getting a plane, you might want to consider doing a simulator first before you actually go ahead and make your purchase of an aircraft. Test out the plane in the simulator that you want to buy. So let's say you want to buy a J3 Cub. But, you know, fly it. Test it. Learn how the aircraft functions, you know? Learn its its buttons and all that, and the switches and the dials. This plane I could fly with my eyes closed. Not actually because that's dangerous, but you know what I mean. Like, this is a very simple plane to fly. So, that's why, but the Cessna 172, you have to know radio, you have to know a bunch of other switches which isn't that complicated, but it can be to someone new, so that's why I'm recommending it. Get a simple aircraft first before you go ahead and purchase yourself up a very expensive plane that has a bunch of more modernized kind of stuff to it, so you don't confuse yourself. So start off with a simple airplane that's easy to fly, which is the J3 Cup. And it's antique. It's vintage. This airplane's got history under its belt. This thing took place in, in many air forces and militaries, you know? It flew all over the world. Korea, man. Like, this aircraft was used in Canada, USA, Australia. All kinds of um, allied countries this thing was used in. So, yeah. And you'll find a crap ton of these things flying around in Alaska. Because it's probably one of the best push planes out there. So, yeah. But that's just me. But you know what? A lot of people do say that this is a very good airplane. And they got floaties, too. You can put floats on this thing and turn it into a seaplane. You can do whatever you want with the J3 Cub. Except do a backflip and a barrel roll bunch of other stuff but hey you know what it's a good plane and it's not that expensive either these are pretty cheap surprisingly okay and we are on the ground also another good thing about this I can taxi with this plane so that's the thumbs up so here we are on the ground I'm just gonna go ahead and power the plane off and there we go so this thing has a wooden propeller that's awesome. Okay, hopping out of the plane then. So that was the review of this very simple airplane. If you guys enjoyed it, do make sure to uh, leave a like. Hit the uh, subscribe button and turn those post notifications on so you guys do not miss out on any other video coming out. 
Um, and let me know in the comments section below which other aircraft you'd like me to do. So this aircraft is from 1938. And now we're going up. I think I may have missed a few planes. I might uh, have to look into it uh, for the Junkers uh, JU-57, uh, which is a... Uh, no, sorry, no, the uh, JU-87 Stuka. Very famous plane, German aircraft. And the, uh, and the Supermarine Spitfire, which is one of my favorite airplanes on the planet, which is also a 30s-based airplane. So, there's that. But we got J3 Cup, and that's the review of this airplane. Um, and if you haven't seen the St. Louis one, do check that out. I'll leave the description of the aircraft uh, below. This plane, you don't need it because it's base model, so you can just, you know, go up to your FSX aircraft catalog and you'll find it right there. Anyway, guys, that's all for the video. Take care.